Welcome back to another video for our chessboard application. In the last video, we finished up print board. So that was step one in our program flow. Step two is what we're going to work on this video, where it says here, ask the user for the XY coordinate, and then we'll be able to place the piece. So here's how my design will work. I'm going to create a method that is going to return a cell. And uh, I want to get those coordinates from the user. So I'm going to come up with another helper function called set current cell. Now we're going to go ahead and create the suggestion as the potential fixes allow. So it says we're going to generate a new method. Now at the bottom here, you can see that my new method is created on line 37. And it is telling me that it is going to return the value of a cell. So let's put in the comments so we know we're going to code here. I'm going to ask the user for an X and Y coordinate from the user. And then I'm going to return a cell location from the grid. Okay, so my two writing prompts are going to be enter the current row number and enter the current column number. Now I want to capture these values as an input. So I'm going to use a read line to save the value into the integer called current row. Obviously we have a problem. Let's hover over here and it says you cannot implicitly convert the type of a string to an integer. So read line is expecting a string. However, I told it to assign it to the integer called current row. So to fix that, we need to do a parse. So in C sharp, the way to do that is to type in the int class followed by a method called parse. And this will interpret read line from a string and it will convert it to an integer. Obviously, if the user types in something besides an integer, the program will crash here. And so I'm going to leave the error checking for one of your uh, later parts of the assignment. Now we want to do the same thing for the current uh, column. So let's copy our code and paste it below and change one thing. Let's just change the name of the variable. So we are going to receive two variables. So the last thing that this function needs is a return variable. So we are returning a thing of type cell. So we will take a uh, grid or the grid and we will select current row and current column as its coordinates and return that. So let's come back up to the place where we called it from. So current cell is the value that comes back from our function. Let's see, I don't need to put in those curlies there. Then I want to make the current cell a visited place. So let's do current cell and say currently occupied equals true. So now we have ourselves a currently occupied cell. Just to see if this is working, I'm going to print the board again. So let's copy print board and paste it in line 29. That's where I guaranteed that I would print it. So the comments should be uh, fulfilled now. Let's save it we should be able to add a new item to the board. All right, so now the program is running. You can see that I have an empty board. Now it says enter the current column number or row number. Let's try three and four. And now you can see that the current square occupied is at item three, four. Notice we start counting at row zero and column zero. So it would be four, five in a lot of people's mind. Okay, so now we have the uh, actual destination of our current piece. Now let's do the last step here, which is calculate all legal moves for that piece. So let's do a method under my board. So I think in the class that we created called board, there is something called mark legal moves. So let's choose that one. And let's see if that works. We'll get an error that says, in the class definition, we were expecting two parameters, as you can see here. 
it says in the way that you've written your function now, it says there are no arguments that correspond to the required format, formal parameter. So the formal parameter is cell and string. So if you might recall, recall that the cell is the destination, so we have one called current cell. Now the second parameter is called a string, and you can see that it's titled chess piece, so I can just put in the word knight since we've already got a uh, knight that's programmed properly. So let's save that. We'll print the board again, and then we'll read line. All right, so let's try it again. So I'm going to put in a 3, comma 3. So it appears that we're almost correct. I have all the legal moves marked, but for some reason the X in the middle of the board has disappeared. So let's go investigate why that might be. Let's go back and to look at the board class. So in the board class, as we have a function that says mark legal next moves, notice the first thing that happens on step one. It says clear all previous legal moves. And it cleared out the legal next move and it cleared out the occupied spaces. And so it switched it back to false. So we set it to true in one of our places in the code and now we switched it to false. So we have to switch it back to true for one of these places. We have a, a cell called current cell. That's where we're trying to place the knight. And then we uh, set all the legal moves. So down here after where the switch statement is ended, we're going to put something in for the grid. So let's say the grid is going to mark the current cell. And let's do the uh, row number here. And also the current cell uh, dot uh, column number. We want to set this currently occupied to be true. Let's run the program again. I'll type in a 3 and a 3. This time you can see the legal moves are there and we can see the X in the location where we chose. So that looks like we have all the marked legal moves.